koinonia, a place of encounter with the Holy Spirit, and transformation by the principles of God's kingdom. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 6. The apostle is, is teaching here. And Paul is teaching the church in Corinth. Now you must understand that this was at a time in, in the church when there was such an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Understand the context here. Are we together now? There was such an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, miracles, signs, wonders, the demonstrations of the Spirit. And Paul needed to begin to put things in place to share with them. This was to me, I think maybe second to the book of uh, Ephesians, one of the, the, the apex of the demonstration of his apostolic ministry to the church in Corinth. How be it, I read now, we speak wisdom among them that are mature or perfect it says yet not the wisdom of this world the word sophia the wisdom that is a derivative of experience and your interaction with the cosmos he says this is not the kind and the dimension of wisdom nor of the princes of this world so the bible even acknowledges that the princes of this world are operating a level of wisdom that is higher than what is available in the cosmos that comes to naught seven but we speak the wisdom of god in a mystery even the help me hidden wisdom mm. even the hidden wisdom which god ordained for our glory so whatever that hidden wisdom is we know that it was hidden because there are a kind of people that have been selected to be glorified by it whatever that wisdom is we know its assignment already that whoever finds it will inherit glory the bible says that it has been ordained for our glory eight which none of the princes of this world knew for had they known it they would not have crucified the lord of glory nine but as it is written i had not seen nor ear heard neither has it entered into the heart of man the things what is the things the hidden wisdom the things that god has in store for them that love him 10 hallelujah he says but god has revealed them to us but god has revealed them to us who are the us the chosen generation the royal priesthood this select people by god's grace a people purchased by his own blood the bible says god has revealed them to us by his spirit and then he now tells us something the spirit can do that the spirit sustains the ability to search how many things no man has that ability to search all things but the bible gives us the quality of the spirit that grants him access to be the revealer that he possesses an ability to search all things and that includes the deep things of god that the holy spirit like you are you are listing the qualification of someone that that qualifies him to be given a job he says the holy spirit is the revealer of these mysteries and that there is an attribute in him that qualifies him and he starts by telling us that attribute is his ability to search all things and that includes the deep things that no eye can see that no ear can hear that cannot be comprehended by even the most intelligent of hearts that the spirit of god is able to search them and reveal to us for our glory for what man knoweth the things of a man so he's digressing here to help us understand something that you cannot ordinarily know what is in my heart except my spirit is that true and then he says even so the things of god no man knoweth no man but the spirit of god 12. now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of god that we might know the things that are freely given to us of god so the bible starts there by telling us there is a mystery shrouded by the wisdom of god and it is called the hidden wisdom of god 
and that this hidden wisdom has been kept for the glory of the saints please understand are we together now and that the bible says this wisdom is not the same as the wisdom of the world nor of the princes of this world that comes to naught he's trying to show the all-surpassing excellency of this hidden wisdom that relative to the wisdom of the world and relative to even the wisdom of the princes of the world it comes to naught it can't be compared are we together now but it says that this wisdom is hidden and that there is only one entity mandated with the responsibility of searching out this wisdom and bringing it to the saints but the bible says whoever by any means can access that wisdom the destiny of that person regardless is glory that it was hidden for the glory of the saints that means i can look at your life and know whether you have accessed that wisdom by the dimension of glory that vetoes your background the dimension of glory that vetoes the limitations around your life there is a mystery that can lift men out of the grip of the the terror and the vicissitudes of this life the bible says it is the hidden wisdom of god a body of information privy to the saints that the holy spirit can grant you access to that if by any means my brothers and my sisters regardless of your background that you hold on to this wisdom then your world is about to see a a wonder and a marvel they look at you and see attributes that are not allowed for humans to have the hidden wisdom revealed by the spirit the bible says we have not received the spirit of the world that means that if you don't even have access to the spirit in the first place like um permit me to use this analogy it's not the best but imagine for instance that you want to see pastor shola and you come into his office and there is a pa uh, that's why i said it's not a good analogy because it's it's not that when you compare the holy spirit but then at least just for your understanding that there is a pa between yourself and pastor shola is that true and that if you do not embrace the pa and he doesn't give you access you will not be able to meet him remember the goal is to access him so that between yourself and that mystery that has been kept for your glory there is a personality that has been mandated to stand you cannot ignore him and have access to that the bible tells us the quality of that hidden wisdom that it cannot be gotten by any other route the world cannot find it the princes of this world with the education and intelligence listen let me tell you this let me tell you this we are an enlightened generation and um it is it is something that is 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 worthy of commendation that we are educated and enlightened because it opens up our faculties and helps us to be able to assimilate we can we can look at life and deduce because we have been guided through experience you know to be able to interpret life properly but when it comes to the matters of the spirit we must sustain the fortitude to to be humble enough to know that education um sociological enlightenment and spiritual illumination are not the same isaiah 29 is god blessing us already isaiah chapter 29 read for me please verse 11 you'll be projected and i want us to read together isaiah 29 and verse 11 ready it's projected let's read one two go and the vision of all uh-huh is become unto you as the words of a book that is stop there first a book that is sealed a book that is can be accessed but at the moment it is sealed sealed from who listen go ahead let's read no please go back to verse 11 go ahead and read which men deliver to one that is what learned stop intelligent educated they deliver the sealed book to him and what is his response read this i pray thee and he said i cannot because it is sealed hmm. it is true that i'm educated but there is a mystery behind this book it is sealed i cannot read it 
Not because I cannot recite the letters. It was not sealed with a scroll. It was sealed with a mystery. You can open the book and yet not see. Next verse. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned. Saying, read this, I pray thee. And he said, in the first place, I'm not even educated. So there is a realm where both the educated and the uneducated stand helpless. These are the matters we are discussing in this conference. That there are dimensions that only the spirit, like a cult, can usher a man and say, come. So when you see someone stand in a, in a dimension of spiritual possibility, immediately you can know the agency that would have assisted that man. Are we together? This is the Bible. The hidden wisdom of God. And like we shared in the morning, Acts chapter 20, if you remember, that the character of the word of God is such that it desires to first build you up before delivering to you your inheritance. You must be built up. God is not so, he, he, as passionate as he is, um, to see us bear fruit God knows that he cannot deliver anything to us that is bigger and greater than our capacity if you have a little cup and you are given a drum of water you can only get a cup out of that drum not because the drum is unable to give more but the vessel that you have is limited and you are confined by the limitation of that vessel so God is a God that is obsessed with capacity listen carefully there are many of us no matter how you pray and fast like the parable of the talents god cannot give you more than two he has vetted you and seen that your best is to handle two so it's not a matter of praying and say lord anoint me more lord anoint me give me greater membership greater influence in the spirit no it is an issue of spiritual capacity because remember they got more bread than they had capacity for and the bible already teaches us a lesson what men do when they have more than they need they waste so he said gather the fragments as a lesson to the saints i i was so benevolent and people ate when they were full they started throwing it away and the lord watched them while they wasted what came as a miracle once a miracle now a waste he said gather the fragments and the people wasted 12 baskets full it was a lesson are we together now that every time god looks at you out of his love he restricts his benevolence to your capacity it's an act of mercy so that there will be more when you expand because if he gives you everything and is beyond your capacity you will waste and never have again is god speaking to us now the hidden wisdom of God we're dealing with very deep matters of the spirit tonight very briefly before we pray we'll be praying for the sick and just trusting God to do a few things quickly but I want to share with you one of these mysteries that the Bible calls the hidden wisdom of God it's a body of truth a body of spiritual information kept together that God grants men access to. Let me sincerely tell you that there are these dimensions of spiritual reality you cannot study, you cannot learn. It is revealed. It's true. It's true. It doesn't negate your personal um, diligence in the spirit. It doesn't negate your hunger and pursuit. But God comes to you. The apostle Paul told us that it was by revelation. He, he, he had what he calls the fellowship of the mystery. Being called into an understanding. And so he opens you up for the sake of the saints. And then you see something. The writing can be on the wall. But now you know what it is. And you can interpret it and the saints can understand. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Matthew 25. Blessed.
be the name of the Lord. Spirit break out. Break our walls down. Spirit break out. And heaven come down. Sing it one more time. It's a prayer. Spirit break out. Break my walls down. Break my walls down. Spirit break out. Spirit break There is a mystery that we call a parable. And this is a mystery of ten virgins. Please follow me. The Bible begins to liken the kingdom of heaven. So you know that he's talking about something deeper than women. It's not about women at all. It just so happens that the actors of that mystery in this story were women. Are we together? Just like marriage. In the original context, marriage has nothing to do with a man and a woman. It's a mystery that was there before Adam and Eve. Two actors were brought into the scene and separated to help men understand that mystery. And it also doubles as a spiritual system of reproduction. But marriage had always been there because both a man and woman are two dimensions of God. He separated them to help men understand him. So this is a mystery. So the Bible starts by telling us, then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened unto ten virgins. How many? Ten virgins. Which took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Please stop here. Very interesting. The first information we gather here is all the ten were virgins. So we're not talking about the issue of sin here. And defilement both of them passed the test based on what this meant are we together now number two that both of them were equally qualified to meet the bridegroom so the bridegroom had no particular bias for them ten virgins and then they went to meet the bridegroom are we together so it was not an issue of sin or righteousness no they were already virgins separated by the blood of the lamb and then next verse verse 2 the bible says five of them now he breaks them into two groups remember our discussion is about wisdom the hidden wisdom of god don't don't forget what we are dealing with and so the bible now says the operation of the kingdom bless you pastor nathaniel thank you so much it says five of them were what wise and five of them were foolish so this is not an issue of being a sinner or not this is an issue of access to wisdom or otherwise don't forget we're linking up something the bible says that there is the hidden wisdom of god that is given for the glory of the saints and now he begins to adumbrate this in this parable it's a mystery that's why it's hidden in a parable sealed in that parable until the spirit of revelation opens you up to it it says five of them were wise and five of them were virgin were were foolish now let's see what made them wise and what made others foolish ready verse 3 they that were foolish took lambs and took no oil with them stop this is what the bible calls foolishness so we need to find out what it is because in as much as i know taking a lamp in the night is wise and yet the bible says just for the error of taking a lamp with no oil you are foolish although a virgin although qualified to meet the king but you are ruining your chance of meeting the king and we will know why 
are we following please if you're with me say amen, amen. Hmm. so five took lamb and took no oil with them next verse but they that were wise what was their wisdom they took oil in their vessels with the lamb so all of them took lambs but they had no oil and the bible says this was foolish and this was wise are we together time is about to prove the wisdom of the spirit that inspired this scripture now next verse quickly please while the bridegroom tarried this was the test the test was the test of endurance for as long as time was not in the equation both of them looked wise are we together now as time went on the necessity for the oil started coming up and that was when the foolishness of the five were revealed they started their journey together all holding lambs are we together and the word tarried they all slumbered and slept so even if his weakness they were all weak are we together even if he's falling short of whatever it every other experience that happened to the foolish happened to the wise the only distinguishing difference was that there was time and time began to reveal the wisdom in carrying oil along not just the lamb next verse and at midnight there was a cry behold the bridegroom cometh go ye out all ten were called no sentiments uh-huh verse 7 then those virgins arose and trimmed their lamb uh-huh 8 and the foolish said to the wise give us of your oil for our lambs are gone out 9 but the wise answered saying not so lest there be not enough for us and you but go rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves ten and while they went out to buy the bridegroom came and they that were ready went in to the marriage and the door was shut stop let's discuss the matters of the spirit now so this is the story ten virgins all preparing to meet a king and the bible says all of them carried lambs remember we're discussing things of the spirit are we together the bible tells us very clearly that lamb is the word of god is that true psalm 119 give it to us and verse 1 1 and 105 so every one of the 10 was open to the ministry of the word follow me now they had lambs they were bible students they were people of the word that was what even made them virgins because we are born of the word so their access to the word qualified them to be virgins but their access to the oil qualified them to tap the wisdom of god remember the wisdom that is hidden that none of the princes knew is only revealed by the spirit whoever has the spirit is the one who can access the wisdom are we following now please and so the bible says thy word is a what so we know it didn't say it's like a lamp it's a lamp so what all ten were holding was their encounter and their ministry with the word are we together now that word they had the word they knew the word they were students of the word but five said mm -mm, we understand that in spiritual things it is always the word and the spirit not the word alone please follow me the word and the spirit isaiah 48 and verse 16 god never sends a man just with the word alone read it with me please come ye near unto me uh-huh hear ye this i have not spoken in secret from the beginning from the time that it was there am i now all of us read together one to read and now the lord god uh-huh and his spirit had sent me the lord god alongside his spirit the word and the spirit sent me not the word alone are we together now access to the word without the spirit is what produces 
rituals and legalism and 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 veers people out of the life of god ever learning one way the devil makes you to become less spiritual is by creating a religious culture around the world satan can destroy your spiritual life by giving you a bible He said, ye search the scripture for in them ye think you will find life. He can occupy you with the pride. I hope you know, I, 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 I trust that God will grant us grace to learn. That, do you know what we call the council of the Sanhedrin? Pastor, do you know where it was inaugurated? That inauguration started with Moses. The 70 elders that were called. What happened to them? It was the ministry of the spirit that birthed that council. But by the time we get to Jesus in the gospel, they had thrown the spirit away and all they had was the letter. So when Jesus came and saw them, he said, what happened? You didn't start this way. There were commandments and the spirit on Moses came on 70 of them. And so they were put as a system of eldership to preserve the precepts of God. By the time we get to the life of Jesus on earth, these guys had thrown the spirit out of the equation. Yet they had the Torah, the Pentateuch, the five books of Moses. Even Satan has the lamp, but does not have the spirit. So if your system of defense on earth is just to possess the lamb and by no means demeaning the word please don't get me wrong and there is a lot of teaching around the world and that is true but what we do not understand it is that the lord god and his spirit had sent me attempting to access the spirit without the lamb is what will cause people the word of god defines the boundaries of the operations of the spirit you see the same way the oil is put in the lamp so the lamp contains how far the oil should walk so if you do not have the word then when the spirit comes your appetite for hunger will dapple you into witchcraft and you do not know what agency is sponsoring that act hmm. the oil is only useful when it is inside the lamp Please follow me. This is the hidden wisdom of God that was preserved for the glory of the saints. That means when you see someone quoting scripture, why is my life not moving? There is no glory in my life. I can diagnose spiritually like a doctor that you are not accessing the hidden wisdom of God. And one of it is what is shrouded in this mystery of the ten virgins. The Lord and his spirit had sent me. It is always the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit. Everyone please say the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit. It looks like we have a generation right now that allows you to choose. So there are word people and there are spirit people the spirit people are the ones who fall down the word people are the ones who are intelligent both are in trouble are we together now it is the ministry without the oil the lamb will do you know the fire will hot the what they call it now the weak without the oil the fire will destroy the weak it is the oil that makes the weak to keep standing hallelujah so we can carry an empty scripture oh in the name of jesus blessed is the man that fears the lord his seed shall be mighty upon earth the generation of the upright shall be blessed wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever you are not lying but it has no effect in the spirit like a lamp with no oil the realm of the spirit continues to watch you and there is no life-giving factor the word himself walked as if he was not the word till the spirit came upon him your word walked for 30 years as the son of joseph never called the christ till the spirit listen this lamp you see was a person they were holding <sighs> the 
this entire story when Jesus came as that lamp and was walking after 30 years listen carefully listen carefully listen carefully the Bible tells us that at, you know well let's let's just continue what we are discussing Jesus goes to John the Baptist he didn't say John teach me <clears throat> he was the word don't forget John your ministry is that I cannot walk in glory even as the word until you cause that there be access to the spirit and then baptism when John came out, the Bible says the heavens were open. The same way the other virgins began to pour oil inside the lamb. The spirit of God came from heaven upon Jesus and turned him into the Christ. From that time, he went to the wilderness for 40 days. He came out, the Bible says his fame went abroad. Strange things began to happen to him. He said how God anointed the word with the Holy Ghost. Anointed with the Holy Ghost. And leave power. Anointed with the Holy Ghost. It is always the word and the spirit. The ministry of the word. The ministry of the spirit. Let me tell you what the word does. And, and I submit to you. I don't claim to know everything. But I'm a bit concerned at our, I, and I don't speak to House of David, I'm just speaking apostolically. The, the scope of the understanding of many people about the word. Our approach to the word is the same approach to a charm. And that is wrong. The word of God in terms of its operation is not a mystery. The goal of the word of God is to construct in us the value system the word is supposed to do something are we together now please listen very carefully the word of god is not some superstition thing to just hold and just um and it's, it's not necessarily in in that that charm like manipulation of it no the word of god is a spiritual medium that does many supernatural things among them these giving you the mind of christ it begins to culture and alter your perspectives the word of god is a compendium of the methodology the modus operandi of the kingdom so when you operate by the word is supposed to be a system of spiritual education that brings you to think like christ you begin to understand the things of the spirit god's operation his system of operation are we together so i can know you are accessing the word not just by your ability to quote it that the word of god has so influenced you influence your faculties when i see you i should find it hard to trace you to any nationality on earth because the word of god has created out of you a culture that cannot be traced to any nationality this is the operation of the word so I should be able to see a Yoruba man and an Igbo man and a northern man and when two of you stand influenced by the word you should look like family members if it is really the word you should look like family members it should be so difficult to separate you into geographic contexts so if I'm still alive to my foundation then it's a sign that the word of God has not prevailed because all ten were virgins nothing more was said about them the word of God unified them to one family. It was the lack of the Holy Spirit that diverged them to different. The Bible never says there were 10 sisters. It never said there were 10 relatives. Because of their possession of the lamb. It didn't even tell us the sizes of the lambs were the same. The fact that you had access to the lamb qualified all of you to be called one family. This is the ministry of the word. Is God blessing us tonight? But the challenge usually is the ministry of the spirit. And I'll tell you why. Because for you to begin to engage the ministry of the spirit, it will do many things to you. Number one, the ministry of the spirit 
will in many regards insult your sense of maturity and order the character of the spirit was given in john chapter 3 and verse 8 the wind blow it the word is orderly there is a system of order but when you come to the ministry of the spirit it demands extreme flexibility are we together now so the wind blew it where it listed the candle wick does not move around but the oil can move around even though within the vessel it is it it can be confined this dimension of the holy spirit is 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 a threat to tradition are we together now so when you begin to operate by the ministry of the spirit and now you see someone dancing like a fool you know now there's a problem with this one you see where the problem is there is no problem talking acting intelligently i mean remember you went to school and now something comes upon you and you have to dance or something comes upon you and you have to laugh and you are saying hallelujah i don't even know what is happening to me i'm jumping around and they say now i know that this your spirit thing has a problem yet that was the, the same thing that we call foolish is what made the virgins wise so the canal man he says cannot receive the things he never said the canal man cannot receive the word he said the canal man can still be a virgin but when it the true test of spirituality is the ability to sustain the flexibility to be balanced yet to be able to receive that means that if someone is shouting there under the anointing and um, i know that i am um, this is a church with order but your pastor has that spiritual intelligence to know that that shout is not just rowdiness there is something being birthed in the spirit I understand how easy it is come my dear to look at this lady and say in the name of Jesus I speak over your life be healed but when the Holy Ghost tells you just walk around this lady move like this you see that's the ministry of the spirit that one now even you the doer you are you are threatened by what the newspaper will interpret this thing to be uh, you, you would rather be confined Our interpretation of spiritual things is proof of the absence of the oil in the lamb. Oh. Yet the Bible says it is in accessing that hidden wisdom that the glory of the saints lie. That means sometimes it is in my jumping in the room alone and saying hallelujah lord i don't know what you are doing but i'm just jumping like a fool and the bible says my glory is being programmed in that it doesn't make sense to me but it is the ministry of the spirit why will a tenant be rejoicing and just say oh thank you oh oh lord i give you praise i'm dancing a husband holds his wife and says we've been barren for five years but let's roll on the carpet and that, that's what the holy spirit is saying and you just look at him and say you mean it no wonder you don't have a child with with this kind of sense that i mean what is all this and three months later they tell you the woman carried triplets eight years of birth compressed in nine months the glory of the saints if she gave birth to only one child she would sponsor the child but now a rich man gets interested in these triplets and said look the fact that they are triplets i want to pay their school fees till university the ministry of the spirit alas master for it was borrowed where fell it and carries a stick and throws it down hidden wisdom i'm not talking of superstition my brothers and my sisters please let's not confuse what i'm explaining here there are lots i'm not talking of superstition at all let me emphasize it again this is not some superstitious things no the spirit the supervisor of the strangeness 
we give you God the highest praise from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun we give you God the highest praise yeah. God, the highest praise from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. Moses, sit down, please. Why? Listen, listen. Ah, God, God is doing something to someone here. That's why we sang and said, break our walls down. Remember you sang it. I warned you, you still sang it. Moses, tell them the Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more. But how will it happen? Moses, take a stick. Go and stand by a river in front of two point something million angry people who are threatened to go back to slavery and touch and let it divide master if it be thou i show you the ministry of the spirit bid me come and he said come walk on water pastor let god reveal to you to tell any member to walk on water and you see what is going to happen in lagos by tomorrow Let me show you the ministry of the spirit. You are highly favored. Telling Mary. Mary is standing quietly. And an angel comes to say you are about to experience the ministry of the spirit. And she said, how shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. And he says, I know. The normal course of life. Is that you will have a relationship with your husband to lead to that pregnancy but i'm about to introduce you to the ministry of the spirit the power of the highest shall overshadow you although it will be strange believe it that's why when she was pregnant she started searching who else has experienced this strange ministry and she went to elizabeth quickly to be able to relate with her now the bible says the baby slept that should give you concern but we don't ask questions because it is also the ministry of the spirit how can mothers be talking and their unborn children talking too so when you come to church pregnant and while the message is going on your baby is moving too you are surprised whereas that's the ministry of the spirit too because you were told until the child is born first before he's alive but that child is participating in the service and as you are speaking to him he's listening the ministry of the spirit is where the glory of the saints lie it will help us to access the hidden wisdom of Christ that no eye has seen no ear has heard neither has it entered into the hearts of man listen my brothers and my sisters if you want to truly walk in glory you must sustain the flexibility to let the oil move freely although in a lamp you can't freeze the oil and have it effective no the potential of oil is in its flexibility when when oil is condensed and you pour it in fire what happens as it begins to melt that's when it can pass through and fry whatever you are doing many want the oil but the condensed version of it let it fit quietly and not move and the oil says not me the wife of the prophet tried it that oil condensed there in a small container and remained there while she suffered but when the time of glory came the man said look you need to shake this oil go and get vessels the oil needs space to work you have constrained the oil by limiting its space so borrow vessels let the oil find space and you see that the oil can bring you money and you can live of it for the rest of your life 
the Lord reveals to you as a man of God, Lord, use me greatly. And the Lord tells you, tell her that I am healing her. And your ego stands between that prophecy and the opportunity for another ministration. What if this lady says, mind yourself, man of God, I'm not sick. If you want to lie, find another person somewhere and cameras capture it. And so you are standing there. The oil is under pressure, waiting for your flexibility and your faith. Whereas you have not asked, what if this spectacular miracle happens? Think what it will do to your ministry. Think what it will do to the name of the Lord. Especially that the lady did not believe you. That is the testimony of an unbeliever is powerful. Because an unbeliever is clear about his biases about God. So when an unbeliever believes, he makes other people believe. So when, when God wants to give you 300 members at once, he will bring one very controversial, hardened person who is sick and give you a word of knowledge because that miracle cannot be doubted, for instance. And then you stand there. The word is there, but the spirit is under pressure the word and his spirit and this person is blessed and touched and goes back to be used by god to bring you all kinds of people come see a man one woman by the well equal to a crusade crowd one madman at gadara equal to the ministry of 10 cities ministry will be hard when the spirit is exempted it's difficult to bring members one by one you need to tap into the dimension of the spirit. A simple but strange order where God will make noise through you in a way that will annoy the devil. Remember, the devil also can access the lamp. If all I do, just talking and saying all of these things, let me tell you, you will feel moved the same way you cry when you watch a movie so there's nothing special the true transforming factor is the spirit behind it words are spoken and it looks like it enters you but the bible says it's the spirit that enters men that causes the motions are we together now yes that is why our prophetic decrees are powerless in the name of Jesus, may the Lord lift you. We say, Amen. Word, no spirit. No spirit. In the name of Jesus, may your life change. Word, no spirit. It is even possible to fall down. No spirit. I made up my mind that truly, truly, and, and I want you to listen, please. You are not a blessing to men if you ignore the ministry of the Spirit. When God recommends someone to you, it's wise to listen. I will not leave you comfortless, he says. I will come to you. He began to speak about the ministry of the Holy Spirit in John 16. I have yet many things to tell you, but ye cannot bear them now, he says. How be it when he... The spirit of truth is come. His assignment is that he will guide you into all truth. He will show you things to come. He will take off what is mine because he can search the heart of the, of, the, of the father and reveal to you. And the Bible says this is the hidden wisdom that none of the princes. You see that? For had they known this, they would not crucify the Lord of glory. Why? Because crucifying him was what gave us access to the spirit. So if they had known that when the word and the spirit meet, whoever holds both is dangerous, they would have made sure Jesus did not die. Remember the Bible says, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Galatians 3. It says, be made a cause for us, for it is written, cost is he that hangs upon a tree that the blessing of Abraham, what is that? Justification by faith, may come upon we the Gentiles, comma, to the end that we may receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. That's the end. So he was not just crucified just to give us life. Uh -uh. It was a channel, a doorway, that we finally access the Spirit that was in one person on all of us. It is that Spirit of adoption that calls us into glory. 
so I can stand from whatever background and, and wherever and hold on to the word of God a virgin hold on to extra oil a wise virgin qualified to now meet the groom just because you start a journey to destiny the groom can mean anything in your life the groom can mean the breakthrough you need listen the groom can mean whatever you expect is your version of the groom and the lord says when you start that journey just because you anticipate the coming of the bridegroom sometimes he may take time and when that word seems to get you weary the oil will sustain the hunger while you wait for the groom there are times that you have no words to pray you sit down you are waiting you know you need time you still came back from church but you are weary but when you have the spirit you can engage the the mystery of the spirit that can keep you you finish you are so you are so downcast in 10 minutes you finish all your prayer and then when you begin to pray in the spirit access is given to you are you seeing that now this is one of the hidden wisdom of god shrouded in a parable of ten virgins that is not enough to just have the lamp the word you must also have access to the ministry of the spirit you must desire intimacy with the holy spirit not to be a preacher but as the balance system that assures you that you will see the groom listen i give you an assurance if you hold the lamp and you hold the oil you must meet the groom yes sir man of god when you hold the lamp and you hold the oil then be ready for an extraordinary ministry businessman when you hold the lamp and you hold the oil then be ready for a level and a dimension of influence and grace and prosperity you may have expectation for the coming of the groom but you may never meet him until the lamp and the oil gives you that access the last thing I'll say before we begin to pray. Now, for me, when the Lord gave me this revelation, it was quite a dangerous one. Because the timing of the oil matters. You must get the oil on time. The sellers will remain there. But the usefulness, the, 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 the goal of the oil is to help you meet the groom. So if you get the oil late, by the time you are running, because it takes time to get the oil, trim the lamb and make it valuable. The people had money but had no oil. And they now said, look, the sellers are still there. Go and get. They innocently ran to get and by the time they came back, the door was closed. pastors members will not continue to sit down under a powerless atmosphere forever the faster you got the oil the more you can be assured that God will be able to keep the people because a time will come when they sit down and sit down even if you receive the oil later the door has been closed listen very carefully you will need the oil quick now that your destiny helper is on site so that it can help you negotiate the business well if you ignore and they get another client your business may suffer for a long time it was the hand of god that wrote the commandments and he did it fast moses trivialized it the next time he had to carve the stone and it took time it is always easier the first time so it is it, the, the access, the labor dimension to access the investments of the spirit upon your life. If done well and done early will bless you. My life is a testimony. It takes time to know the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not, is not a chat friend online. That you say hi, he says hi back. It takes time. The Holy Spirit is like a woman. That's why they are both called helpers. You know how women act she knows you like her and she'll be acting as if you are not the, i mean what is all that good morning she says i'm busy whereas she was praying that you should call her 
the Holy Spirit acts in the similitude of a woman. He must vet your passion to open himself. You're not just going to come one emotional night and say, Lord, I love you. Reveal your glory and empower me. You think he's that foolish? It takes time. And that time sometimes may mean years. Lord, I desire you. He sees your passion in the rain. He sees your passion when ministry is not working. He sees your passion when nobody knows you. And, and like a woman who is watching the man that claims he loves her. And then one day she hides somewhere that he does not know. She's there. And she hears him saying, Lord, but I love this woman. And she says, finally, I think I found the man. But when he comes, just like when she comes, mm, then you will see things happen in your life, my brothers and my sisters, at a frequency that will even cause you to marvel and wonder. The Spirit of God. The Spirit of God. Behind every exploit in the kingdom is the Spirit of God. Not just the Word of God. The Spirit. Even the Scripture was inspired by Him. Holy men wrote as they were moved by Him. Many other people wrote under different influences. Their books are dead and forgotten. He's the preserving power. That's why nothing that was done to this world could survive. Because it was not just lamp. There was oil in it. Look how long this lamp has been burning. It has been burning for ages. When you study Bible history, you see that this lamp has gone through all kinds of things. Yet there is a mysterious oil. Ah. Jesus, you're the cup. That won't run dry. Yes, you are the cup that won't run dry. That means when that oil comes on your lamp, 30 years down the line, you are still on fire. And people say it's not normal. Let me tell you, this is the mystery. I wish I had time. This is why people start well, they start well. As believers they love God 10 years down the line when the oil begins to finish or the oil is not even there you find out that someone who represented something many years ago now you are surprised he's not even born again now I explain to you he's not a bad man he only focused on carrying the lamp now you see those who have the oil with odd and those who don't have the oil for a while they look the same it's time that proves so we are starting this journey many of you are jumping now you are zealous oh god bless us let's be like pastor shola let's be like pastor nathaniel bassi the sustaining power is not just the letter there is an oil whether you are up whether you are down the fire is still burning no matter what happens mm. look at job at a point where everything had gone down he would have just off the lamp the wife said let me help you I, this your lamp looks like you're already dying job said i'm still here though he slay me there is an oil that still keeps me standing our generation is like lambs without oil the financial heat different kinds of disappointments here and there that continue to happen and like i taught you in the morning favor can come in forms that many times does not look like favor the well is favor a scandal about whether or not it was a rabbi not a ghost that got you pregnant is favor A woman begins to desire to destroy your destiny and God still calls it favor. Takes you to a dungeon. The annoyance on the face of certain people is favor because that's what releases your gift. And then you become a prime minister. But between that capture of Joseph and all of that, the lamp and the oil, if all he had was the lamp, I assure you, he would not survive. Listen, let me tell you, life sometimes can press you in a way 
that will make you value the oil you have there are times you can be holding a lamp or a lantern and it slips out of your hand and falls to the ground the oil keeps it burning although it's on the ground and you can pick it but light a matchbox with no oil let it fall by mistake that's it treasure of my heart and of my soul it's in my weakness you are merciful redeemer of my past and present wrongs you're the owner of my future days to come listen house of david and the many who are watching and following and will watch let me tell you this the secret to a sustaining christian life is not just to know the word and get the word but to embrace the ministry of the holy spirit not as a tool for effective ministry but as a matter of life and death your only hope of remaining that you bear fruits and that the fruits abide the tree connected to the root is what will keep it through the dry season until the rainy season comes again the deeper the root it can survive it can it can outsource a system of nourishment even when the physical weather does not send rain that's why others that are not deep die and you have to look for seeds to plant again but there are trees when you plant once you never plant them again when you plant corn because the root is just there it's not deep just delivers one fruit and that's it but there are other trees where you plant them they will give you mango this year they will give you mango next year some will even give you two times in one year the secret is the depth the secret is the depth for some of us god is speaking and say look you need to minimize premature manifestation and remain in the secret place know the holy spirit let him do something upon your life that a generation cannot deny it is impossible to ignore a lamp that has oil in it neither do men light a lamp hallelujah the candle burns because it has oil in it and it's able to stand and give light to all who are there we're dealing with the things of the spirit when your songs come you know um my 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 sisters love the ministry of nathaniel bassi so much and you know they requested one time that i i tell him to autograph um a CD for them and he graciously did so God bless you they were so excited one time it was just his songs that used to be in my car I mean all through his song beginning to the end and I just sing and I'm like wow you can you can you can see the depth and the richness of the spirit there are people who stand on stage and preach and as they drop the mic you you know you were blessed but you you don't exactly know what happened you just know that well at least we thank God the Bible was opened I heard something but there are meetings that create an imprint in your life you go back and you don't know why you are not sleeping you sit in front of your meal and you don't know which one to eat first you just stop and you you, you plan to eat but later you just find yourself thinking the spirit and then something comes upon you and you stand up and your life changes forever the Spirit of God changed my life. If there is anything at all that represents glory upon this life that you see, it is credited to the ministry of the lamp and the oil. Not the lamp alone, the oil. The lamp made me a virgin. The oil made me a wise virgin. 
The lamp made me a man of God. The oil makes you an exceptional man of God. The lamp makes you a Christian. The oil makes you a solution. The lamp makes you a businessman. Together with the oil, it makes you a wonder. I do not deny the fact that you are holding the lamp. But tonight, we need some oil. Because for many of us, the lamp is almost getting out. I mean, everything is almost going. And God said, Pastor, put this program fast. And let it be called the things of the spirit. Because there is oil that must come upon certain lamps. My greatest desire... It's not only to remain anointed but to remain hungry and desperate for the Holy Spirit I truly truly love the Holy Spirit I used to hear Benny Hinn talk a lot about Catherine Coleman and those days I would just watch and say my God and then I said Lord open me up to this ministry it's not because of preaching no I truly truly love the Holy Spirit it's not because of what God has done in my life today. It's true. When you speak by the Spirit, the result shows. When you walk by the Spirit, the result shows. This is not some manipulation of men, my brothers and my sisters. With God, when the Holy Spirit works with you, your life becomes a sign and a wonder. We are not really so much without Him. When you truly take away the, the Word and the Spirit factor from us, add us up together, we are not much. You will not want to buy that product. That's too cheap. The real value is the presence of the word and the spirit. Like you can carry a tray that you can buy 100, 200 naira and keep something on top that is priceless. And everybody wants both the tray and what is on top. That's how we are. Earthen vessels. But that the excellency of power may be of God and not of man. If you ever get healed, it is because of the word and the spirit. If your life ever changes from this conference, it is because of the word and the spirit. If that job ever comes for you, it is not just emotion and just desire and just prophecy. It is the word and the spirit. The Lord and his spirit has sent me. The Lord and his spirit has sent me. How did you get blessed? The word and the spirit. How did God lift you and connect you to great people? The word and the spirit. Why is your business blossoming all over Lagos? The word and the spirit. The word gives you the intelligence to open a shop. But it's the spirit that can draw men there. You can sit down and eat everything you are selling by yourself. It is opened. But it takes the spirit of God to draw men. Mm. Hallelujah. Is it alright if we pray? Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. One more time. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. Hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. 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 In one minute, I'd like you to cry and say, Lord, I am like those virgins. But I want to be a wise one. Give me oil in my lamp. I need 
grace and real genuine anointing for ministry tired of acting like I'm anointed when I am not tired of hoping it works when it can be guaranteed to work are you praying please pray from the depth of your heart hallelujah but I want to pray a prayer for you and I want you to believe you came far and I want to release something upon you tomorrow please whatever it is I don't want you to miss tomorrow There are people in that parable who were called the sellers of the oil. Not just because they collected money, but they were given custody that if your oil finishes, you can go. They sell it. The man said it. it was, it's not pride. He said it. He said there are people who can. That means the wise one got it from there. The oil does not just fall from the sky. There are those who are privileged by God's grace to be given that ministry of supplying oil. And that's the prayer I want to pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree over your life that every dimension you have desired spiritually in the name that is truly above all names may that grace may that fire may that oil rest upon you now please just help them don't bring anybody out we don't have the time in the name of jesus christ man of god look at me i'm seeing something being poured on your head this man i stretch my hands to you in the name of Jesus, you step into a new level of grace right now. A new level of oil by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, every empty, every empty lamb, I send by the Spirit of God fresh oil. You will know oil is entering your lamb entering the prophetic ministry entering the apostolic ministry fresh oil on that prayer life fresh oil fresh oil in the name of Jesus Christ every weariness spiritually you love the lord but you know that it is it seems like this lamb is, is is about to die in the name of jesus i come by the spirit let there be a supply let there be a supply for the visions you used to see and the dreams you used to have they were so powerful they blessed men but something happened and the lamb began to go down 
in the name of Jesus like the hair of Samson I command an activation by the oil of the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ and lastly I pray for you there are many of you who truly are zealous for the word you are ardent students of the word but the grace for performance is not in your life there are many things you vo you vocalize you verbalize some of you may even be men of God sincerely there is a grace that makes for performance it's more than stories if it's not there it's not there I pray for you finally by the supply of the spirit that when your eyes see it and your mouth declares it let the spirit that brings performance rest upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ We believe you are mightily blessed. To connect with the ministry and get more from Apostle Joshua Selvan, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Koinonia ENI to stream Koinonia Live. Go, Go to mixella.com forward slash Koinonia hyphen radio and download the teachings on koinoniadownloads.org. For questions and inquiries, call 0814 721 4444 or 0907 777 7853. We love and celebrate you.